you because he who has been forgiven much loves much. And I can tell you I'm the chief of sinners. I've been forgiven a whole lot. I was an evil worker, a worker with iniquity. But he forgave me. He forgave me, which put a passion in my heart to love him until the day I die. Because he pulled me out of that miry clay and he said, not guilty, because you put your faith in what I did at the cross. I cleansed you. I've given you forgiveness of sins. People, that'll make you happy. Amen. I don't care where you, if you're in the deadest church in Shreveport, Louisiana, Bossier, Louisiana, Hawk, Princeton, Louisiana, if you remember in yourself the forgiveness of sins that Christ offered you, you will jump and shout and thank God for it because He's the one that comes to you. That right there gives you the joy that you need. Many people are looking for joy on the outside. Well, I hope this preacher can just grab me up and get me charged up and stir the gift up inside. No, you've got to remember yourself Amen. what he's done for you. Amen. There's yes. nothing this preacher can do. I can't yes. get the music all worked up and get your emotions going. I can huff and puff if I wanted to and start huffing and puffing like they're doing in southern churches. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to get your emotions going. But that's not going to work Monday through Friday. Amen. It's not going to work on Saturday. It, what's going to work is you and that personal relationship, knowing what Jesus paid for, you're going to be full of passion. Amen. You're going to be full of joy because it's your personal relationship. Amen. Amen. We've got it backwards in our churches these days. We've gotten worked up emotionally in the church and the sanctuary. But when we walk out there on Monday, we got no victory. Why? Because it's personal. And I'm telling you that you need to rec recollect what he's done for you. Amen. You need to recollect and meditate upon forgiveness of sins. Because we had many. We had many, many, many. And he says, come now. Isaiah 118, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, whew, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Psalms 103 and 12 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Well, praise God. Yes. He's removed them from us. Do you know that this morning? Do you have that in your heart? That you can walk forgiven? Praise the Lord. If any man be in Christ, it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, old things have passed on. All things have become new. Amen. You're a new creature in Christ. To be able to walk in that new creature you got to know that all that stuff is gone. Don't let Satan bring it back up. Our merciful, holy God is offering us forgiveness. But not only forgiveness is He offering, He's offering relationship. Oh, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. He's offering us in the name of this church a new beginning. Amen. A brand new beginning. It says in Hebrews 10, 19-25, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He has consecrated, for through the veil, that is to say, His flesh, and having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful who promised. We're going to give one thing this morning. We're going to get that Jesus is faithful. Yes. Amen. Even when we're not faithful, Jesus is faithful. Amen. Aren't you glad that He made a promise with Himself back then in that covenant with Abraham? Mm -hmm. Which would point to the cross where He made a promise with Himself when He took upon flesh Himself and went to the cross, amen, because He amen. knew that we couldn't keep it. Amen. He knew that we would be unfaithful. Amen. So He could swear by none other but by Himself He swore. That covenant. By your faith, it is by your faith, praise God, that you have that covenant package, that you have that forgiveness of sins. For He is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. And let us consider one another. Uh-oh. Now it's getting deep. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now we see a day approaching every single one of us and I minister about it almost every week or every other week. We see this day approaching. And we look at this and we say, well, that means we should go to church. We should gather together in the sanctuary. We should not forsake the assembly together. But that's not all that means. 
It said, consider one another, provoking one another to love. To love. Do you know sometimes that even though a holy God offers us forgiveness of sins, a holy God that's never sinned offers us forgiveness of sins through His blood. Offers us relationship. As holy as He is. He wants to pull us into His bosom, wrap His arms around us, speak to us by the Holy Spirit, give us understanding, lead us and guide us into all truth, be with us, heal our bodies, heal our minds, heal our spirits. And we sometimes will not offer that to others. Yep. Who do we think we are when a holy God who has never sinned, never performed unrighteousness, offers us who are unrighteous, wicked sinners and dark Offers us forgiveness, forgiveness and relationship. And sometimes we don't want to assemble together with somebody who has offended us. Because we don't want to offer forgiveness. Hello? We don't want to fellowship together with those who have offended us. Oh yeah, they can stay on that side of the church. We may can go to church together, but they're going to stay on their side. And I'm going to stay on my side. And I'm not going to offer forgiveness and love and fellowship together no more. Oh my goodness. Think the truth, God. Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing, forbearing, forbearing one another, which means showing patience to. <laughs> it means showing patience to. Mm -hmm. Woo, that's forbearing. That forbearing is getting, getting tough. One another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, you so also do you. You are supposed to forgive as He forgave us. This is the problem we have. You would not believe the unforgiveness that takes place in the church as a whole. I don't know about this little place here. I'm not saying that we are all walking in unforgiveness, but there are things in our life that we have not surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are wondering why we're not filled with power. We are wondering why. Why is my calling being held back? Why is this being held back? What is stopping this? What is stopping this from coming to fruition? What are you not letting go of? What is it that is holding you back? It's not Jesus. Praise God. He, he's ready. He, he's ready. He's ready to immerse you with the Holy Ghost for the calling of power. And in, you enter into the calling. But there's something inside of our hearts many times that block the flow. Kind of like bad plumbing. Y'all ever had some bad plumbing? Yep. And you take that plunger, and that water still sits there. And you take that plunger.